Hi there, it's Tracy Kiernan from StepbyStepPainting.net and this acrylic painting tutorial is going to show you how to paint a Christmas tree. So I'm going to go over specific techniques for painting trees, including branch-like trees, and of course the main focus is the Christmas tree. So I'm going to show you how to do that kind of tree. So we're going to be working on an 11 by 14 inch canvas. Of course, this design can work on any size canvas or surface. I'm going to go ahead and start by painting the background. So I have a really pretty background with like a glowing um, warm yellow center and the blues on the side. So the four colors I used in this background are titanium white, unbleached titanium, so that's going to give you that kind of warm yellow glow, um, ultramarine blue, and light blue violet. I'm going to be using a three quarter inch flat wash brush. We're going to go ahead and get started. So go ahead and load your flat brush in the water and kind of pat it dry. And you want to mix about equal amounts of the beige and white together, but don't mix it all the way. You want to kind of let that white and beige blend together on the canvas. So what we're trying to achieve with this background is this like unblended streaky look of these colors that are going to be blending together. The brightest part is in the center and it gets gradually darker as we work on the sides. But the streaks are going to kind of mimic trees that are way in the distance. Of course, we're going to paint some branch trees on purpose, but some of these strokes are going to give us that illusion that there's trees far, far away. So we're using the full width of the brush. We're doing just the center of the canvas. So the middle part has uh, more white and the outer parts have a little bit more of the beige color. And I stretched that out um, almost towards the sides of the canvas. And I'm leaving a gap at the bottom of the canvas because that's where our snowy ground will be. So you don't have to paint all the way down. I'm going to grab, without rinsing the brush, if your brush has too much paint on it, you can wipe it off. Um, but that beige color will mix fine with these blues. If it was a yellow, it probably would turn green, but the beige color works nice for these colors. Um, still gives it that yellow glow without turning green, if that makes sense. So we're gonna grab a little bit of that light blue violet and the white. We wanna introduce do this very gradually because we don't want it to get dark too soon. We still want it to kind of fade out. So this is kind of the light blue zone of this. So we're just very, very small amounts of that light blue color. Um, if needed, grab a little bit more white to help with your blending. But also remember that we want it to be streaky. So we want some of these lines, darker lines to kind of show with our blending so we don't want to over blend it to make it look like a gradient we want it to just look streaky i can grab a little bit more white pop white in the center but we don't want to bring too much of that blue in the center the center should be kind of this bright golden color we don't want to work that too much could grab a little bit more of that gold or the beige and the white a few streaks in the center but i don't want to overdo it so then we can grab more of our light blue violet and add more of that on the outer parts and blend that in. So we start on the outside and we kind of bring it towards the middle so that it blends. We can grab white, titanium white is a color that helps us get that color to mesh together and blend. And then when you're ready, the ultramarine blue is only introduced on the far, far part of our canvas, this is the darkest part. So we want to add that just on the edge and then be very careful with bringing it into some of the other colors. So we don't want to get that too dark, but we still want it to blend. Ultramarine blue blends very beautifully with light blue violet. Light blue violet actually has ultramarine blue in the color, so it blends nicely with it and just be very gentle with bringing that in. We want to have those streaks show without over blending the color. You can grab more of that blue just on the edge, make it slightly darker on the edge. That is going to create some really pretty contrast with the edge compared to the very center. So we want to do the same thing on the far left part of the canvas ultramarine blue. We want to blend it in 
We can use that titanium white to get it to blend in and we can grab more of the light blue violet and blend that in. We just don't want to bring too much of that dark in the center. We want to bring that, leave that center part super bright. So we can see those dark vertical lines in there that already created some trees, illusion of trees, and we have a gap on the bottom for our snow. So you don't need to wait for this to dry to do the next step. I'm going to apply the snow ground layer on this. And we want to go ahead and if you want to use a ruler to measure this, you can, otherwise you can kind of estimate it. But this land area is about four inches from the bottom of the canvas and it's not a straight line, it's a wavy line. So if you want, you can get a ruler and I'm just going to put my ruler on the side of the canvas without making any, any sort of marks, but just use this as a guideline. And then I'm going to use the three quarter flat brush. So you want to go ahead and rinse that all off and dry it and we want just white on our brush but again if our background isn't dry and our white kind of blends with our color that's okay in fact we want our snow to not be pure white we want to create some shadowy layers in the snow so this will help with that and so rinse dry grab our titanium white you might need to load more white onto your palette because we used a lot of white in that background. Use the tip of your brush, just kind of sketch a wavy line. So the highest peak of that line is four inches and it kind of dips down a little bit in the middle. So you can see what's happening. It's blending with that color. That's okay. So I'm just going to go with it and let that blend on there. It can be darker in the back and brighter on the bottom. Kind of worked out that way and just fill the rest of it, loose sort of wavy strokes for our snowy land area. And then this is optional. In fact, what's gonna end up happening is the tree is gonna be covering this, but I wanted to take that gold. I did this mostly because I have a lot of leftover beige on my palette. I didn't wanna waste it, but I just wanted to take this gold and just kinda of blend it right here as if that bright part of the sky is sort of reflecting on the snow. Kind of fun, just a little bit. Let that kind of blend with the snow. Maybe towards the bottom is a little bit of a glow. Just let that kind of gently blend with the white. So we don't have solid white on the ground for snow. We have different variations. We have some light blue and some of that beige color in there as well. So let's go ahead, rinse our three quarter off and we are done with this brush and we're going to move on. I'm going to briefly show you techniques for painting branch trees. So branch trees can be done with um, a few different brushes and it kind of depends on your preference or what you're trying to achieve. Sometimes for me it depends on my mood. So sometimes I feel like using the round brush for trees and then sometimes I feel like using the bright brush. So there's no right or wrong way, it just kind of depends on your preference. So the brush on the left is a bright brush which is a flat brush that's about a half inch wide with short bristles. Brush on the right is a number eight round brush which is kind of thick but it goes to a point, which is helpful for creating thin strokes. I'm going to demonstrate with the round brush first. So this is the Princeton Velvet Touch number eight round brush. The technique is the same if you're using a different kind of round brush. I'm gonna go ahead and demonstrate on the back of my canvas. So I loaded my brush in the water and I kind of tapped it dry, but I'm letting that water kind of loosen up this blue paint. So I went ahead and loaded it. Um, I wanna make sure 
So I'm wiping the ferrule, which means that there's water right there on that metal part, and I don't want that dripping down and messing it up. So I wiped that down. But there is paint mostly on the tip of the bristles right there. So when I start my trees, I like to start at the bottom. Some people like to start at the top, and that's fine. Again, there's no right or wrong way. It just depends on your preference and what you feel most comfortable with. But I, I like to start at the bottom. I like to create a trunk that's kind of wide. And then I let my trunk go thinner as it goes up. So it starts out wide and goes thinner. And I talk about pressure a lot. And that just means that when you're pressing hard, you're making a thicker stroke. When you're releasing pressure, you're creating a thinner stroke. So pressing hard, thick, releasing. So a good exercise you can do is do a combination of pressing hard and thick. So the thin part, you're using mostly the tip of the bristle. So this number eight is useful because it's got those very, very thin bristles at the top. So you don't really have to do a lot of work. You just use the tip of the bristles for the thinner stroke and use the bottom part, the thicker part for the thicker stroke. So when I'm painting those very, very thin branches, I'm just using the very tip of it, holding it lightly to create the thin strokes. So that is the round brush tree. And I'm going to show you the 12 bright brush. So this is flat brush. The technique is very similar. You also use the pressure concept. Um, I'm going to do the same color, but I'm going to grab some of that light blue violet because I was run running out of this blue color on my palette. But you want to load the brush kind of the same, a little bit watered down. That helps with the flow. You don't want to do too much water. We don't want this to be watercolor consistency, but I'm actually adding more water into this because this back of the canvas is not gessoed. So it's not painting very smoothly, but I'm just demonstrating stroke techniques. So with this brush, you're changing the angle of it. So I start at the bottom, did the thicker um, trunk, but I'm doing this thing where I'm using full width, but then I'm also using the side of it. So full side, but you can also twist your hand like that, and that's going to change your stroke consistency. So this is how I do the thinner one. I'm holding it this way to use the side of the bristles that's gonna create your thinner branches. And you can still do thick and thin when you're holding it like this. You're just pressing harder for thick. And so hard release for thin. So you can create your thick and thin by holding it that way. So you do your branches thick, thin. And that's how you create the different consistency of branches using the bright brush. So I'm gonna go ahead and paint a few trees that are in our background. And again, you can choose if you wanna use the bright brush or the round brush, or even a, a different brush. I've demonstrated this with angle brushes before. So if you like the angle brush, use the angle brush. So whatever you feel most comfortable with. And I'm gonna use the bright brush because I'm in a bright brush kind of mood right now. So um, with these trees, we the, it's gonna be a little bit tricky because we want to, we're gonna be using the same colors on our palette, um, but it's the same color as the background. So if we do a tree and it's the same color as that part of the background, it's just gonna blend in too much. So we wanna to try to get it to be slightly darker so it shows up. I'm gonna load my palette with more ultramarine blue. And again, I'll be using the 12 bright brush. So let's start with just a pure ultramarine blue tree. I'm gonna start on the right. And again, just like what I demonstrated on the back of the canvas, I'm gonna do the same thing here. So I start out using the tip of the brush, holding it vertically, creating a thicker base, but then releasing pressure when I get to the top. So these branches are very loose, abstract, wavy. They're not perfectly straight. Using the tip to create the branches that go thinner, pressing harder to get the base of that tree to be thicker. 
So for me, this color, just using the solid ultramarine blue, ended up showing up nicely. Um, and some of those branches are overlapping our glowing section, and that's okay. So we're going to create several more trees. I'll go ahead and demonstrate with the round brush, and I'll do one over here on the left. So kind of the same thing. We're going to start out with a thicker base, and then bringing it up. It's getting thinner. So changing that pressure of the brush using the bristles, the tip of the bristles for our thinner pieces. Very loosely, I'm kind of wiggling my hand as I'm doing these branches so they're not perfectly straight. They're organic, slightly wavy. Um, if you want to, you can add some light blue violet into some of that so you can change the variation of color so it's not, doesn't have to all solid be ultramarine blue. But these trees that are on the far left and right are the darker trees. We can bring those branches up and towards the middle. So we have two darker trees on the left and the right. And we can start adding some lighter color trees towards the middle. So I will go back to the bright brush and this time using light blue violet and do another tree over here to the right of this one. This one's going to be slightly smaller, although if it ends up being the exact same thickness and size, that's okay. So these branches, I don't want them to overlap the tree on the left because that tree is in front, but still the same technique. And you can see how it's slightly lighter and it's going to create depth make it look like it's farther away because that tree is slightly lighter. And also that slightly a little bit shorter and it also goes behind the tree next to it. So I'm going to do another one over here. Our branches can kind of curve towards the middle and if we end up letting that branch overlap our tree, that's fine too. So this is just the light blue violet. I didn't rinse my brush off, so there was a little bit of that ultramarine blue on my brush, but I was loading it in mostly the light blue violet. And then I'm gonna do another set of trees. So this time I loaded that into some white without rinsing my brush off. So this is a very, very light color. We can still see it, but that's kind of the point. We want it to just kind of fade away to the point where it's just barely a tree. I'm going to go ahead and wipe my brush off and use the beige here. So we can use beige to create a tree. So this one right here, a beige tree. But this one's very, very loose because it's much, much in the distance. We don't see um, as many details from that tree versus the ones that we did with the ultramarine blue. Those ones were a little bit more detailed. Can add some white. I can mix beige and white together. So you might need to play around with the colors a little bit depending on the background. So like right here, this is showing up because it, there's a little bit more blue in that area and that lighter color is showing up. But right here, it's not showing up too much because it's pretty much the same color. So if you want to play around with it, if you want to even add just a bit of blue to some of those trees in the center, you can. You just want to be careful because the trees in the center should not be dark. So not too much blue. That beige showed up in that area. But over here on the right, it's not really showing up. But that's okay um, because we still have those streaks that are kind of in the center. And that's going to create the illusion that there's trees much, much further away. And... Plus, the focus of this painting is the Christmas tree, so we're going to be doing a lot more detail on that Christmas tree. I'm going to go ahead and just add a few lighter color branches up here, make it look like they're kind of meeting together in the middle. But that is it for our background. And we want to go ahead, let this dry before moving on to the next step. In fact, this is a good time to kind of take a break and come back if you're doing this painting in two different segments 
I'm going to go ahead and demonstrate our Christmas tree, which is the focus of this painting. And I'm using the color Hooker's Green Hue Permanent, and I will be mixing that with the blue to make it darker. So this is the 12 Bright Brush. You can do this with a fan brush or a round brush. There's different techniques. I will be demonstrating this with the bright brush this time around. So with our tree, we're going to go ahead and make a vertical line. So I have the green and I'm mixing blue into it to make it darker. With these trees, we want to always start with our darkest layer and then work up to create the lighter part. So the lighter layer will be the snow. I'm going to go ahead and define how tall my tree is. So if you're like me and your vertical lines don't go vertical, <laughs> um, you can use a T-square to help you line this up. And I'm going to bring it down. Just be really careful with your T-square so you don't smudge your paint. But basically, you want to use your brush to create a vertical line and you want to define the height of your tree. So we know where the top is, we know where, where we are going, and this helps us create our tree so it is vertical and not going diagonal. I'm going to go ahead and demonstrate a practice tree real quick for you. So this is with the ultramarine blue, and I'll go ahead and get my vertical line in. So if you're not confident with this tree yet, you can also practice a couple times. I'll go ahead and do my vertical line and I'll show you what kind of strokes we are doing. So I like to start at the top and so this brush is a half inch wide and we don't want strokes that are a half inch wide at the top so we need to angle this to where we're only using the corner at first to create these little tiny branches that are way at the top. So I'm using the corner and I'm just kind of stroking downwards to create that branch like shape. I'm only using the tip of the brush. I'm not using the full bristles. I'm not pressing down hard on it or anything. Just using the tip and tapping it. So eventually as we work our way down, you'll be using the full width and it's like you're stamping it. So you're stamping it each stroke is like a stamp and you're tapping the brush and you're working in kind of a zigzag formation from the right to the left. And just kind of going back and forth and you're just creating the edges. So your tree is a conical shape, triangular. So as you work your way down, so you're going left, right, you're tapping that brush. Pay attention to the edges of the branches. So some branches are just kind of sticking out on the sides and kind of pointing downwards. So when you're done practicing, you can go ahead and do the real tree. So we're mixing green and blue together just because we want it to be dark at first. And again, we want to start by using just the corner of the brush and not the full width and we're creating the little tiny branches. And then as you work your way down, you're going to start using the full width of that brush. So your strokes will be about a half inch wide and you're angling them downwards. So we're loading our brush in the blue and the green and you're just tapping it, going left and right. Pay attention to the edges. So some of the branches are just kind of sticking out and creating their shape on the edges. Um, we don't want this to be very wide yet because we have the whole vertical line we have to fill up and the bottom part is the widest part. So we don't want this to be very wide yet. In fact, it's about maybe an inch wide at this point and I haven't gone too far down yet. So you just want to keep doing that. I'm going to load my palette in some more of this blue. So the ultramarine blue helps to get this to be very dark. Um, the reason why we're doing this layer super dark is because we'll be adding a snow layer on it. And so this dark color is going to create that shadowy part of the tree that doesn't have the snow showing. 
So again, tapping it, working your way. Um, as you get down kind of in this area, your strokes are bigger. So your strokes might become a little bit more abstract at this point because we have a large area to fill up. So you can get kind of abstract and expressive here. So branches. So you can use the full width of the branch, of full width of the brush and drag your stroke downwards. So just take your time, work in a left and right formation. Each branch, we're just stroking downwards. The edges, you can create some shape, some branches that are kind of sticking out on the edges. And you wanna just keep going. Careful not to get too wide yet. It just gets gradually wider. Another trick for this could have been to draw the triangle shape with a piece of chalk to help us get the width filled in correctly. And just continuing to drag more and more strokes downwards. Um, on one side of the line, our branches are angling one way and then the other side of the line, they're angling the opposite way. So that's something to keep in mind. So our angle switches direction once we pass that middle line. If you notice that your middle line is still showing up, you can take your darker color, so your ultramarine blue, and you can just do like a second coat of paint over that to disguise that line. But by the time we get our snow and Christmas lights on this tree, that line will not be showing. But I'm just taking that blue, just kind of going back and covering that line. But down here where our strokes are much, much bigger, thicker, a lot of pressure on the brush towards the bottom. And you want to go all the way down to that line. So there's no trunk showing in this tree. Our branches are covering the base of the tree trunk. So all that line is covered. When you get to the bottom, you're just kind of doing the same thing. But I'm kind of exaggerating those branches at the bottom, dragging them down a little bit further. I'll bring these branches down and outwards a little bit more, but we are going to paint a shadow under this tree to kind of help with it not look like it's just floating on the ground. But that is it for the first layer of the tree. And of course, we need this to dry before we start adding any kind of snow on it. Otherwise, our snow will turn green and blue. But I'm going to demonstrate how to do the shadow under the tree next. So we're gonna go ahead and rinse all of that green off of the 12 Bright Brush. Get it rinsed dry. And I'll be using the light blue violet color for the shadow and some white. So I'm gonna go ahead, rinse my brush, grab light blue violet and white, get that all on mostly the tip of the brush. And I'm gonna use the tip of the brush and just kind of do this loose left and right thing. Just kind of gradually adding shadow under the tree, just using the tip of the brush, little left and right strokes. So I'm just kind of gradually adding the shadow. It's gonna be a little bit darker towards just under the branches. So just under those branches, a little bit darker and then a little bit lighter, kind of further down the canvas. Left and right strokes, kind of creating that shadow so it kind of goes into that triangular shape, but it's opposite. I'm 
loaded a little bit more ultramarine blue onto my palette and I just want little touches of that darker blue just under the branches. Kind of gently blend that down. Then I'm going to go back in and add a little bit more white to kind of get that shadowy color to blend. You don't have to render it like this. You can keep it simple. I'm just going to take that white, kind of drag it from the left and right kind of inwards into the shadow area. Kind of that transition zone where that shadow and that white part of the snow meet. Just a little bit of white in there. Kind of blends with that wet blue and drags it back out. So hopefully our tree is dry enough to where we can do our snow. So I'm going to show you the snow next. My brush is loaded in just titanium white, so no other color, just pure white. And so what we're going to do is we're going to do the same thing that we did earlier when we painted the tree, only we're adding a layer. So the strokes are literally the same with the exception of the amount of coverage that I'm using. So I'm not covering all the green. I'm letting a lot of that green still show through. So I'm just making little clumps of snow that are kind of patched in here. It's blending a little bit with the green right now, and that's okay. Um, I would say if it was blending too much to where all the snow was just turning into light green then definitely dry your painting come back to it um, but for the most part this is working so just chunks of little white snows I'm doing the same kind of stroke so just adding that paint right there on the tip of the brush stamping it kind of working in from left to right kind of in a zigzag direction but leaving a lot of that green still showing through pay particular attention to the edges of the branches so you want to add little bit extra pop of super bright white on the edges where that snow would just be piled up on that. And then we have little clumps of snow kind of in the middle as well. Kind of makes kind of a little formation of branch from the center of the tree kind of outwards. And so you want to kind of vary that. It doesn't have to stay consistent all throughout the tree. Just imagine that snow would be following, fall, um, falling on the branches kind of sporadically. So right here, there's like a little chunk of white that started in the middle and kind of went outwards. Right here, a little bit of snow in that area. So the fact that that white is kind of blending with the green is kind of helping because it's giving some of that snow some darker shadow in it. So in a way that kind of worked out edges, a little extra white right on the edges of the branches. So you're just going to continue that down the tree. So when we get kind of in this area, our strokes are going to be a little bit larger. The snow is piling on a little bit thicker. So down here in this area, it created like a branchy area that was kind of, see how I angled it downwards? Um, keep in mind, our vertical line is gone, but the direction of our branches go 
towards the right on the right side and they go towards the left on the left side. Um, you want to kind of keep that same sort of rule of thumb when you're doing your snow. So the direction of the snow would be on the branch, but it's going. So this one's kind of going to the left, to the, yeah, to the left. And then in the middle, kind of going downwards. But then when it goes past the line in the middle, that goes towards the right. A lot of the green, the dark color from the branches that's still showing through, we're not completely covering it with snow. If you wanted to add more snow, you can. If you wanted less snow, you can add less snow. So when, when we get to the bottom, it just kind of piles up a little bit towards the bottom branch area. So kind of the same thing. I don't want to lose some of that darker color from the branches on the bottom. I can go in, just kind of add more if needed. Kind of pay attention to the edges, the parts on the sides that are hanging out. I'm going to add a little bit more white to my palette and go in and go back over some with this super bright layer. So some of the paint, especially towards on the edges where the branches are, they might have mixed a little bit with the green, so they might be a little bit darker white. But going back just at the top at some of those to make sure that bright white layer is there. And right now I'm angling the brush to use just the corner. I'm doing little tiny, small kind of dotted clusters, kind of wedged in between some of these darker areas, little dots, gives it some more variation. So just little dots, little clustered dots of snow. So next, let's go ahead and rinse this brush off and we are done with the snow on the tree. We're going to do something very easy next. We're going to paint the little snow dots in the background and I will be doing that with a number four round brush. So load that into the white. And so I am doing these snow dots to where they're kind of all going at an angle from the upper right to the lower left in that same direction as if the wind was blowing that direction. If you want to do it that way, you can. Otherwise, you can just paint them sparingly throughout the painting. There's no way to mess up these little snow dots. Um, you want to paint some that are clustered together, some that are kind of more far apart. So they're not all evenly spaced apart. You also want to create variety. So some little dots are um, larger, some are much smaller. So you do that just by changing the pressure of the brush. You press hard for a large snow dot and you press very lightly for a little tiny snow dot. But you can see how I'm just making most of them go in that in an angle. They will show up very nicely against the dark area and they may not show up as much in your center and that's okay. You still want to paint them there because they're still visible. So they would be overlapping your tree branches. So don't be afraid to paint snow dots over your tree branches. You can even paint a few snow dots that are overlapping the actual Christmas tree. You can also paint snow dots that are overlapping the ground.
Next, I am going to paint the lights on the tree. So we have all kinds of colored glowing lights on this. So you can choose to do a um, just the yellow lights, or if you wanna do colored lights, you wanna just go ahead and load your palette with whatever colors you're going to use for your colored lights. I used primary yellow, primary red, and that primary red is a good color if you want kind of a pinkish color in your light, or if you wanna mix purple. So primary red is kind of a pink red color. And then the ultramarine blue and the green. I ended up not doing too many green lights because the tree was green, so they didn't really stand out. But if you wanna do green lights, you can do green lights. So basically, it's very simple. You just take your round brush and make a little dot where you want your light. And then before that dries, you wanna take your finger and just kind of smear it. And that turns it into a blurry glowing dot. Now you might find that it looks super, super light and it's not showing up at first. So you might need to do this in multiple layers. So add a couple layers and just use your finger to kind of smear it. And then in the center of each of your blurry dots, you want to put titanium white. So with the titanium white, you can go ahead and you can smear that with your finger as well. That's gonna make your glowing light even brighter and then you can add another little white dot in the center or you can just smear it once and then just add the white dot in the center. But that adding that solid white titanium white dot in the center of your glowing lights, that's going to give it the effect that the light is bright and glowing because that center part is the brightest part of the light. If you didn't wanna use your finger to smear these, you can just use your brush and kind of dry brush it out. This technique is most effective with the yellow. You're going to find that with the colored lights, it's a little bit harder to make it look like they're glowing. Still possible, but a little bit harder. So we can do, did all the yellow lights, and then when we're ready to switch colors, we can rinse, dry, and then grab our next color. I'm going to be doing the primary red color. So grab our red. And same thing, just do the little dot, use your finger to smear it. It's not super bright at first, so you might need to do a few layers. You might also need to just add white into your layer too, so that kind of brings it out and starts letting it glow by adding that white. And then go in and do your little white dot. So if it's not working right away, you can mix primary red and white together, then do your little dot smeared dot and then go in and add your white dot in the center for the glowing effect. So on my palette I decided to just mix that pink, the red and the white together to make kind of a pink. Kind of helps get this to stand out. So you have a little whoops moment. It dropped my brush and it decided to create its own light. Uh, baby wipes are super helpful to uh, act as an eraser. As long as the paint isn't dry yet it'll wipe right off. Good thing to have in your painting station. So this step takes quite a bit of time. Um, take your time. You can do as many lights as you want. It takes a while because you have to build that glowing part first in a couple layers and then do your little white dots and then you got to switch to different colors. And I'll do the blue next. So the blue ones are kind of hard to get to show up because the blue is a dark color. Still got it to work, um, but so I did the blue layer first, took the white, the white dot in the center and kind of smeared that white dot. That made the blue a little bit brighter and then went back and did that little white dot. Do you can see the difference between the yellow, the pink, and the blue? That yellow is the brightest. If you want to make colors, you can mix your red and yellow to make orange. 
you can mix your blue and primary red to make purple lights. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. Make a little orange over here. With orange, you'll need more yellow than the red to achieve that bright orange color. If you do equal parts, it'll just look too dark. So just same technique, orange, and then use your finger to smear it and then add the little white dot in the center or add the white in the center and smear the white to make it brighter and then add the white in the center. Then I'm going to make a purple. So with the purple, you'll need more primary red than blue. Maybe like a three to one ratio of red to blue. And then do your little purple dots. So if you wanted to do green lights, I would recommend mixing yellow with the green just so it looks different from the green in the tree. So we can try that real quick. Get some more primary yellow and mix that with the green so that it's lighter and different. Again, the green lights don't really show up. If you wanna put them like closer to the edge so they do show up there, but kind of in the, in the middle of the tree, they just get lost. It's the same color. I did a few green lights. Next, I'm going to do the star. So yellow. And we'll use the round brush for this. Load that in the yellow. So I'm just going to do a star at the top. So I just kind of drew a star like if I was doodling a star on a piece of paper and then filled that in solid yellow. And then in the center of that, I'm going to add some white. So kind of like what we did with the lights to get that center to be a little bit bright and glowy. So I grabbed white to so add a little bit of that lighter color just in the center of that star I'm gonna rinse the yellow off dry and just add titanium white. And then in the center, adding more white and then a bright dot the center of that. So that's going to build your star to make it look like it's super bright in the center and glowing. We don't really need to add any glowing effect around it just because of the way the background is. It wouldn't make much of a difference if we added that same color behind the star because it's already glowing behind the star. So pretty much this painting tutorial is coming to its conclusion. You can add more lights, more snow dots. If you wanted to add tinsel on the tree or ornaments, feel free to decorate it and add more things. I'm just going in and add, adding more glowing yellow lights because they look super pretty and are effective. I did a few more primary red lights as well.
This is the conclusion of how to paint a Christmas tree. Hope you enjoyed the techniques explained in this painting tutorial. Thanks for watching and thanks for painting with me.